All right, so here we are in Intro to Exploit Development. And um, what you, this is a CTF. It is not the kind of CTF where you win a big prize and the score and challenges are all new and super hard, like you'll find at, say, the DEF CON CTF. It's just a way to trick you into doing homework. But uh, you do get to practice these basic skills, and there's a scoreboard, and the competition makes it a little more fun to do these things. So you should find the zip ahead to whatever challenge is of interest to you. If you're just a beginner, then start at the, at the start, and you may only do the first few challenges. If you are more advanced or interested in a different topic, you may want to zip down to that topic and work on that. There are three of us here to help you now, and Liz may be in later. Um, Sam, Irvin, and Caitlin. We're all here to help people go through these. If you get stuck, contact us. The point is not for you to struggle and give up. The point is for you to struggle enough to where you're learning and then get some help when you need it. And so, uh, for example, the first thing you probably need is to have a Linux server. You may have a Linux virtual machine, in which case you can use it. If you don't have a Linux machine handy, you can make a free one on the Google Cloud. All you need is a credit card or bank account, which will not be charged, and a Gmail address. And you go through the steps, and you end up making a Linux machine. And then you execute a command, and you get a result with this green bar over it. That's the flag. So when you find the flag, notice the number of the challenge you've done. This is ED 200.1. And so you go to Submit Flags, and you choose the right challenge. And then you put in your name and the flag, and then you'll get on the scoreboard. So. Um, I just want to, all right, so what we're going to do here, this is the easiest uh, type of attack is command injection where there's a defect on a server where it takes data from the user and it uses it to develop a command line. And so you can add punctuation marks and execute commands directly on the server as if you had a shell. This is not the most common vulnerability, but it does happen periodically and it is very dangerous because it's so easy to exploit. Very low skilled attackers can exploit it. So we got quite a few examples of this here where you get to inject commands directly onto a vulnerable server. And then we move into the more common memory corruption vulnerabilities. Um, this is the classic buffer overflow. You have a buffer overflow that lets you put too much data in a string so it overrides the area of memory reserved for the string and it hits the control structures that control the return, uh, control the code of the flow of execution. So you can trick it into running some of the string you injected as um, executable code. And there's a variety of these then format string vulnerabilities, heap overflows, and so on. All these things on Linux and then binary exploits on Windows, the same sort of thing. Um, you can exploit uh, stack overflows and other vulnerabilities on Windows. And you can do it on the ARM, although you do have to have a Raspberry Pi for that or an iPhone that's been jailbroken and you probably don't have one of them handy. Um, and then uh, you can install a desktop on a Linux server for some of these challenges. You might find that handy, but I don't think you really need to. And I have some instructions for people who want to set up a virtual machine, which you could do, but um, if you don't have a virtual machine, I highly recommend just using the cloud instead. It really saved our Black Hat session that we did this. I noticed when we taught at Def, Hat and Def Con and Black Hat, there were students who would show up with some awful machine that couldn't do anything, like some machine with a custom arch install without anything working. And uh, I finally, what people told me what's going on, people bring their old burner laptop to the convention that they haven't used in years, and it doesn't work very well. So it really saved our class that we're just using the cloud. You could have an iPad and you'd be fine. All you need is a browser. You make all your machines in the cloud. And that's a good practice when you're doing security tests anyway. You really don't want to do this on a machine you love. So I see you're, you've got a costume for Halloween, Caitlin. <laughs> good. Anyway, um, so that's an overview. And I'll come back and demonstrate these. Uh, the most, and the, by the way, if you want to just skip to the most important ones, I have marked the most important ones with asterisks. So if you just do a few of them, those are the ones to get the most important information. So I'm going to stop this video and post it. Whoa. Yes. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yeah. Stop.